let's start with a leading question. Which one of these two things is more emotionally impactful? The incredibly high resolution photograph of a brick wall that resolves loads and loads of lines, or the very blurry photograph of uh, an incredibly emotive incident? It's a stupid question, obviously. But the point I'm trying to make is that when you take a good image, whether that's capturing a good actor's performance on video, or even a corporate interview done well on video, or a photograph of something that incites emotion in somebody, it's not really the resolution that you care about. For this reason, the fashion of having no optical low pass filter on cameras is incredibly frustrating. It serves no purpose other than to add extraneous, brittle, sharp detail to photographs, and it causes horrible problems that are practically unsolvable in a lot of situations in post. Or if they are solvable, it takes a huge amount of time to solve them that I just don't want to spend. <laughs> I'd rather spend it doing better things, like going outside and touching the grass <laughs> and not being in front of a screen for five minutes of my life. It's frustrating. I have a feeling what this comes from is the way that cameras are both marketed and purchase decisions are made by consumers. And both of those nowadays tend to be led by things like specifications and YouTuber tests of charts and, in, and internet you know, website tests of, of charts and so on. And it used to be that a camera would have a sort of special edition that had no optical low pass filter and the idea was that this version was to be used for, let's say, uh, ultra high resolution portraiture or something like that. When the fashion for no optical low pass filter sort of kicked in, it was primarily aimed at studio photographers looking for maximum uh, resolution on, on an image who didn't really care about Moiré because they can control everything in the environment because it's a studio, you're, you're choosing what's there, so you're not going to put something in it that causes that problem. Um, and there it, it made sense, you want maximum resolution at all times, uh, and in order to get that you may as well remove the optical low, low pass filter. But in every other circumstance it doesn't make sense to me, and unless a camera is specifically aimed at being a studio camera full stop, something like a Hasselblad, um, then it should be on the sensor pretty much all the time. <laughs> I've never in modern times, certainly with a video camera, this is an S5 II which has no LPF, I've, I've never in recent times looked at the S1H footage, which is my other uh, camera, and thought, oh god, that's far too soft, I really need more sharpness. I've been lucky enough to direct some shoots and work on editing for some shoots with uh, that have been shot on uh, various forms of Arri Alexa, and that's not a sharp camera. It doesn't resolve brutal, brittle detail. In fact, that's one of its core brilliant qualities, is it has this sort of certain sort of organic softness. That and the um, dual gain sensor architecture, which has sort of found its way in another form onto Canon uh, high-end cinema cameras now. But um, yeah, the, the, the sharpness, the lack of sharpness itself does actually lend itself to a filmic quality. It's desirable, <laughs> I don't want things to be sharp, and I often will blur stuff a little bit if it looks a bit too sharp, rather than adding more details. Lack of OLPS was such an issue in the early days of things that back when I was shooting on the 600, 550D and 600D, I actually bought a thing uh, by a company called Mosaic Engineering, which was an OLPF that you shoved, you, you blocked the mirror up and you shoved in this OLPF and it stopped the moiré patterning, which was a, really brutal on those early Canon DSLRs. But it shows what a big issue it was that we, lots of filmmakers at the time, and I, I especially went to a great lengths to add an OLPF to, to a camera that didn't have one for that resolution. It already had an OLPF for the 16 megapixels of its image sensor, but it didn't have one for the for 1080p at that resolution and it was skipping lines out and creating all kind of jagged edges. So yeah, it's it's been the sort of bane of shooting for quite a long time and to see them removed from cameras for nothing more than a tiny, tiny gain when shooting things like test charts is, is so disappointing and it goes, for me, goes so much against what image making is all about. Panasonic as a company are uh, probably the least cynical of all the camera companies. Uh, the S5 II I'm shooting on now is a perfect example of what they like to do, which is put everything they can into everybody, even if it means technically sort of cannibalizing their own sales, as we saw with the S1. Uh, the S5 then came out with all the same stuff in a smaller body. It was sort of 
better unless there are a couple of things you wanted, like a bigger and better EVF or that sort of thing, but su subtle features. Um, but having said that, they only put the optical low pass filter in the H so far, the S1H, which is the top video model, has an OLPF and none of the others do. Um, I bought an S1 when it came out. I shot one test shoot with it and then I sent it back and got an S1H because in that test shoot I had all kinds of dancing moiré patterning in the background um, on uh, acoustic treatment that was covered in a sort of red tweed and because it's a fine sharp pattern and it drifted into the plane of focus it just caused all kinds of horrible moiré patterns that I just couldn't fix. So I thought well this this is just going to be an issue. I can't be bothered. One, like one shoot in it's already a problem. I'm just going to send it get back and get the one with the uh, OLPF and thus had to spend a lot more money. So in a way I guess it does work for um, businesses as a, as a way of segmenting product lines but it's very rare that Panasonic would be sort of cynical like that. I have seen um, an electronically defeatable optical low pass filter mentioned online in at least one camera. I'll put up some details on the screen, I can't remember it right off the top of my head now. Uh, that's a cool idea as is Sony's infinitely adjustable electronic ND built into the sensor and that kind of thing. There's some cool ideas around but if I had to choose between no OLPF um, and a tiny bit more sharpness I don't want and a massive risk of horrible moiré I can't fix or can't be bothered to fix or an OLPF and as a result a more sort of soft organic looking image and no danger of almost no danger of moiré I'm gonna pick the latter and I desperately wish that this fashion would die a death. So far there's only one um, documentary I've shot with the S5 II involved in it as a sort of secondary interview cam and B cam um, and for cutaways and bits and bobs like that and it did show up some ghastly moiré in one particular shot that I just had to cut around. I wanted to use the cutaway so I cut away before the pan hit the point where once again acoustic treatment, uh, always the criminal with its sharp uh, finely patterned tweed uh, tried to destroy the shot so I had to cut out before but other than that it's not been too bad. You can sort of work around it, try and keep it out of focus. To loop back to that original point though, the, 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 the purpose of shooting full stop is to get some kind of message across to another human being about something, <laughs> whether that's you feel emotionally involved in a situation that you find yourself in, you take an image, you show it to somebody and they feel like they're there, or you've captured a, an, an event uh, that's happening uh, for all eternity and give people a, a sensation of being there or you're filming somebody talking about their latest product and it's trying to create a desire to purchase it in a in a, a, a potential customer. It's, it's always a kind of human communication that you're dealing with and absolute image sharpness very very rarely plays any role in that to be honest beyond being in focus and having enough detail not to be distracting, um, it's not that important. Whereas a moiré pattern is a perfect example of a sort of otherworldly, uncanny, obviously non-diegetic um, imposition on your image. It's something that you do not want there ever unless you're making some kind of experimental music video that's about moiré or some other bizarre thing, or, or shooting a CRT screen for fun, you know, you might want it to have a moiré pattern then to add to the distorted effect. That's about the only circumstance I can think of. Other than that, it's just not something that you want in, in your life. So to sum it up, that's my plea to camera manufacturers. Please stop leaving out optical low pass filters. I don't think that it's worth getting yourself a few extra lines of resolution on a chart to possibly destroy amazing images, whether they be wide, deep focus landscapes or um, an image of someone who happens to be wearing clothing that has a very fine uh, mesh pattern on it. Those images don't deserve to be destroyed for the sake of a reviewer's test chart. It's, it's just not worth it and it's not what image making is really about. But there you go, that's my rant of the day. What do you think? Do you, do you prefer OLPFs or no OLP, OLPFs? Let's debate it to death in the comments. I'd be interested to hear from people who, who want there to be no OLPF um, and to see why. 
if it's because you're primarily a, sh a studio photographer or if you do genuinely take images just to sort of pixel peep at them and marvel at the particular sharpness and so on, if that is what you use them for. Uh, but either way, uh, I think even in those circumstances, because they're niche, surely it should be something that's a sort of additional option uh, rather than something that's forced upon everyone who doesn't buy the top model. Uh, I think that's probably my only complaint at the moment about um, Panasonic's line of cameras, the S5 II is pretty much flawless for me. It's everything that I need. Um, but that lack of optical low pass filter is just frustrating.